Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are having a fantastic day. If you're new to the channel, my name is Parker Nierenstein and this is Vehicle Virgins. Today, we are teaching you and my sister, Madison, how to drive a manual. So smash that subscribe button. It's gonna be a good one. Learning to drive a manual is an important skill that everyone should know how to do. Now, today's day and age in America, most people don't know how to drive a manual. In fact, a lot of people have never even been inside a vehicle that has a manual transmission. Now, at first it seems like a daunting task, but really it's not all that challenging. With some tips from this video, some practice and time, you'll be well on your way to mastering the manual transmission. Knowing how to drive a manual also has its inherent benefits. One, it's a lot of fun. It can make a boring car really exciting to drive. Two, it allows you to drive a range of vehicles that potentially only come with manual transmissions that you wouldn't be able to drive otherwise. And trust me, these are some of the finest automobiles ever created. Additionally, sometimes if you're trying to save some fuel economy and you're buying an older vehicle, the manual transmission variant gets better fuel economy than an older automatic car does. Also, it's an amazing anti-theft device in the US because most robbers don't know how to drive a manual along with the rest of the US population. You can also have fun teaching your friends, family, or girlfriend how to drive manual once you master it. Trust me, they will be incredibly appreciative and it's kind of fun. I'm excited today to teach my sister Madison how to drive a manual. Before starting, make sure you are wearing comfortable, well-fitting shoes. Something like running shoes work perfectly or driving shoes if you have them. Don't do this in flip-flops that could fall off or high heels use the right shoes that are comfortable. It'll make it a lot easier on yourself. Next, find a friend, family member, or acquaintance with a manual transmission vehicle that will let you use it. Now, best thing you can possibly do is buy one for yourself and then learn. If you're forced to drive it every day, that is how you're going to make the most progress, but you can learn on somebody else's as well. Now, ask them if they're able to drive you in the car to a safe location to to learn. I really love college parking lots, high school parking lots, big business centers with large parking lots so there's not a lot going on. The first time learning manual, you don't want to be out on the open road dealing with traffic and pedestrians and street signs and stoplights. You want to be focused on just driving a manual. So right now, I'm going to be the person who's taking my sister to a nice location to learn how to drive. In reality, you just need a safe place where you can drive 20 to 30 miles an hour so you can go from first to second to third gear, then slow down, turn around, and repeat without having to go into reverse too much. That's why parking lots work the best. As you can see here, we have found a street with very minimal traffic that's long in both directions, no stop signs, and have turnarounds at each end, which will be perfect to get up through the gears and to learn how to drive manual stress-free. Parking lots work very well in addition. Once you have found the right location like this one, it's important to familiarize yourself with the vehicle that you're going to be driving because chances are if it's a manual, you've never driven this car before, obviously. So let's have Maddie hop in the driver's seat and figure out the controls. With the car off and the parking brake engaged, Make sure the seat is in the correct position. So you should be able to grab the wheel at nine and three with a slight bend in the elbows. Perfect. And can you reach all of the pedals as well comfortably? Yes. There you go. Now make sure you know where the hazards are just in case, the horn, the turning indicators, and just figure out the lay of the land. Now the next thing you need to familiarize yourself with, and these are different than from an automatic car, are the pedals. In a manual transmission vehicle, there are three pedals. In an automatic, there are two. In the auto, you have the brake on the left and you have the gas on the right. Now in a manual car, you've got a third pedal. The third pedal, the one all the way to the left, is called the clutch. So go ahead and press that a couple times, all the way down, and then release it all the way up. And go ahead and do it again. Try to learn how far the clutch goes in and how far it comes all the way out. There you go. And then the middle pedal is the brake and the right pedal is the gas. 
So the clutch pedal allows you to turn the car on. Most modern cars, you have to push the clutch in in order to turn it on. Don't do that yet. It also allows you to put the car in neutral and put the car in gear. If you were on right now in first gear and you release the clutch, the car would in theory start to move forward. So try pushing the clutch down a couple of times and notice that at one point in the clutch throw, it's gonna push on your foot a little bit harder than the rest of it. Is there a point where it comes back quicker than the rest, where it feels like it's pushing harder? Yeah. So in certain cars, depending upon the clutch life, it's either at the very bottom of what's called the clutch throw. So the distance, the clutch throw at the bottom. And then in some cars, it's more towards the top. It's towards the top. Okay, that's what I thought. Awesome. So that point where it pushes harder on your foot is really crucial. That is called the bite point, And that is where the clutch starts to engage the flywheel. If you're in first gear, once you get to the bite point, the car will start to move forwards if you're using the right procedure and going slow enough. So get to the bite point kind of quickly. Just find that point in the clutch throw. All right, awesome. Now the most important part when you are releasing the clutch is after you get to the bite point towards the end. So that second half is the most important. Most people, they get to the bite point and they think they're done. They think they've released the clutch and they release it really fast. And that last four inches or the last two inches, they forget about entirely. That's where most people stall. Whereas if you get to that bite point and then you go nice and slow all the way to the top of the clutch throw, you're unlikely to stall. Next, we wanna familiarize ourselves with the gear lever. So, depending upon if the car is a five speed or a six speed, the position of first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and reverse might be different. So, the trick is, you look at the top of the shift knob here, you can see reverse is all the way to the left and up, First is straight up, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Standard pattern. Now, some cars to get it into reverse, there's different techniques. Some, you push it really hard and go into reverse. Others, in this Volkswagen, you push down and go all the way to the left and up. And then some other cars, you actually pull a lever up. It's basically a safety, so you don't think you're putting it into first and you accidentally put it into reverse. So if the car was on, the way to put it into first gear is to push the clutch in, then push the lever slightly to the left and up to go into first gear. There you go, now release the clutch. That would be in first gear. Then to go into second gear, you push the clutch in again, pull it back, straight back into second. There you go, then release the clutch. And then do the same thing, push in the clutch, put it into third, release the clutch to get into third gear. There you go, perfect. Now try going back into second. There you go, perfect. Now, the last thing you need to know is where neutral is. There's two ways of doing neutral in a manual car. One is you can leave it in gear and push the clutch in. That puts the car into neutral. But the best way to do it is push the clutch in and then push the gear lever into the center. The way you can tell that you're in neutral is that it wiggles around freely. It's kind of fun and awkward at the same time. If you're in <laughs> gear, you'll have some resistance from side to side. But if you're in neutral, it can move around freely. There you go. Starting from a standstill is the most difficult part of driving a manual. So when you're stopped, getting to one, two, three miles an hour from the stop is the hardest part. That's the only time where you're likely to stall. And I think you need to get out of your head immediately that stalling is embarrassing. Every single person stalls the first couple times they're trying to learn how to drive a manual. It's just part of the process. Laugh about it, whatever. It's kind of funny, but honestly, it's not embarrassing. So if you stall, don't worry about it whatsoever. So there are two ways to start from a standstill. One way that people often use when they're practicing learning how to drive a manual for the first time is just releasing the clutch slowly. So you get to that bite point, then you release slowly and don't give it any gas and the car starts to creep forward. That way, all you have to do is deal with the clutch pedal. What I'd like to do is actually a different school of thought that involves giving it a little bit of gas at the same time. So once you get to that bite point, you give it a little bit of gas. Now, there's no perfect amount, but it's nothing more than 1,500 to 2,000 RPM. You're feeding it a little bit of gas as you're releasing the top bit of the clutch, and you continue on the gas that helps you roll the car forward. So let's actually try this. Go ahead to turn the car on. You need to put the clutch in. Floor it. Floor it, exactly. Floor it! Floor, it. <laughs> Floor the clutch. Now go ahead and turn the car on. Perfect. Now, go ahead What's and it put in? it into, it's in neutral right now. You can see, you can wiggle it around. So go ahead and put it into first gear. Don't release oh, the clutch yet. Oh, 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 okay. I believe that's third. So go ahead a little bit to the left. 
put it into first, there you go. So then you're gonna release the clutch slowly to the bite point, and as you get to that bite point, give it a little bit of gas. There you go. Look at that. Congratulations. So, as you're cruising along in first gear, familiarize yourself with the car. It's no different than driving any other car. At this point, now that we're about 3,000 RPMs, we're going to want to shift into second gear. Now, there's no magic RPM in which to change gear at. If you're trying to get really good fuel economy, then maybe 2,000, 2,500 RPMs. If you're trying to scare your friends or win a race, you shift near red line. So let's try shifting into second gear. This part is a lot easier. It doesn't require gas in between shifts. So all you're gonna do, you're on the gas, cruising in first gear, let off the gas, push the clutch in, shift into second, then release the clutch, and then go back on the gas. So push the clutch in, shift into second, release the clutch, and back on the gas. Wow, good job, that's actually awesome. And then you can try, if you want, shifting into third. It's the same thing, push the clutch in, shift it into third, release the clutch, and there you go. Wow, congratulations, that's freaking awesome. <laughs> so then the next thing you have to deal with is coming to a stop. Now there are two different ways of doing this. Let's say you're in third gear and you're approaching a stop sign. One way, which is the easiest, especially when you're learning, is to simply push the clutch in, put the car into neutral, so wiggle it into the middle, and then press the brake and slow down to a stop. Because if you are stopped, you have to be in neutral, otherwise the car is going to stall. So let's say you're in third gear, if all you did was just press the brake and come to a stop, the car would start to shake when you were at low speeds, and then it would shut off. Then you would have to push the clutch in and turn the car on again. So to prevent it from stalling, you can either downshift or put the car into neutral and coast to the stop. So let's try the first technique. Now there is a little bit of a side note. It's a little bit more dangerous to do this because if you are in neutral at a stop and you're not in gear and you have to make some sort of evasive maneuver, you have to remember to put it into gear, but it makes it a little simpler when you're learning. So go ahead, push the clutch in, put the car into neutral. There you go. Press the brake and come to a stop. And there you go. All right, now go ahead and try again. Push the car into first gear. If the car is in neutral, you can actually let go of the clutch. If the car is in first gear and you were to let go quickly, the car would stall. So go ahead and put it into first gear. So push the clutch in, push it into first. I think that's third. So go a little bit to the left and up. There you go, perfect. Wow, fantastic. Mm -hmm. So I was gonna say, if you are stalling, some tips to help you, but Maddie's absolutely killing it. Mm -hmm. So if you are stalling, chances are it's one of two things. One, you are either coming off the second half of the clutch throw too quickly, so that first half you're doing well and then you're forgetting about the second half and you're popping off, or you're giving a gas and as you're in that second point of the clutch throw, you're actually letting off the gas and the revs are dying. So you gotta maintain that gas and accelerate through as you start rolling instead of letting it die. But seriously, good job, you're actually Thanks. killing it. So the second school of thought when coming to a standstill is downshifting. Now I can make a totally separate video on this and I have in the past, but I would like to, if you guys enjoy this video, make a new version of a rev matching video. So if you're in fourth gear and you're coming to a stop sign, you can go from fourth to third to second and then push the car into neutral and then coast to the stop. In order to downshift, technically speaking, you have to push the clutch in, go from fourth to third, give it a little bit of gas so that you can match the RPMs of the next gear. Then as you're giving it that gas, you release the clutch and then you're in third gear. But we'll talk more about that later. Other advanced driving techniques are starting on a hill. It makes it a lot easier when you're starting out to do it on level ground because when you push that clutch in, the car is in neutral and it can roll forward or back. So if you're trying to balance the brake, the gas, and the clutch all at the same time, it's a little bit tricky, but honestly, I think you could nail it. Perhaps we can make a video dedicated to starting on a hill as well. All right, well, since you're so good at driving a manual, apparently, let's see what happens when you stall, actually, what the car actually does so you can tell when you have stalled. So put the car in first gear. There you go. And then release the clutch pretty quickly. No gas. There you go. The car jerks back and forth and it shuts off. Now, if the car stalls, 
Don't freak out, stay calm, it's not a big deal. All you have to do is turn the car back on. So when it's stalled, the car has died. So in order to turn it back on, go ahead and push the clutch in again. Click the stop start button or turn the key. And there you go. All right, go ahead and let's try the first technique where you don't give it any gas, just release the clutch really slowly. Okay. Make sure not to be on the brake. Mm -hmm. There you go. Do you think that was easier or harder than doing it with gas? Harder because then I'm just going really slow and then I'm like, oh, I have to go onto the gas now. Fair enough, so fair enough. Not, like if you're doing them both at once, you don't really have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So personal preference, a lot of people have commented in the previous how to drive a manual video that I did that they like to practice just releasing the clutch and not giving it gas. I personally feel like this motion where you're releasing the clutch as you're giving it gas is a little bit easier. Well, since Maddie has done such a good job, we are gonna graduate from this private section of road and go out onto the actual road with stop signs and pedestrians and other cars. Honestly though, you've done a great job. It's not that big of a deal. The biggest thing is just staying calm and remember Remember that you do know how to drive a car, you just have a couple more things to think about. But after a week or so of doing this, it's gonna become completely second nature. I remember, honestly, it was difficult for me at first, so much so that I was like, am I never really gonna learn how to drive a manual? But keep faith, you will be able to learn how to drive a manual by following these tips and practicing. So we're coming to a stop, put the car into neutral, slow down with the brake, there you go. Make sure it's clear, and then remember, put the car back into first gear. Okay. There you go. There you go, fantastic. That would have been bad. <laughs> and then, put the car into second. Clutch in, second gear. There you go. Perfect. Speed up a little more again. Put the car into third. Clutch in, third gear. Wow, okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm being hustled. <laughs> it's all a joke. It's all... No, this is actually really impressive. Congratulations. Thanks. So there you go, with the proper tips, it's actually not all that difficult and you can learn to drive a manual on the first time that you're actually trying. You're by no means going to master it. I know some of you are gonna comment, well, I never stalled once and I was perfect the first time, but that's just like, you're just lying. And if you're not, then no one cares, Then bro. you're me. Then no I'm one cares, kidding. bro. <laughs> all right, so the next thing to try is downshifting. Are you down to try downshifting? I'm down. I'm down, okay, so. In order to downshift from fourth to third, you're gonna push the clutch in. Now, because third gear would have higher RPMs than fourth gear, you have to give it a little bit of gas while the clutch is still in so that the RPMs can match called rev matching, and that way when you downshift into third, it's not super jerky. All right, so go ahead, push the clutch in, rev it up a little bit, put it into third, Clutch in, rev it up a little bit. That's a little too much. All right, release the clutch. There you go. <laughs> a little bit too much gas, but you had the technique down. You wanna try that again? Go ahead, push the clutch in, put it into fourth. There you go. Oh, you're in neutral. Push the clutch in. There you go. There you go. This is really stressful with traffic. I know, nice. <laughs> traffic this makes it a lot more stressful. Horrible. You're doing a good job though. Help. All right guys, well we'll go more in depth in rev matching as well as hill starts and other advanced techniques, maybe heel toe downshifting in another video. But I hope you guys found this video informative. As always, please browse the channel and subscribe and hopefully each and every one of you will be learning to drive a manual quickly and easily. See you next video guys.